Hey guys, so we're walking in the old streets of Bar le Duc in France. This is a historical map or guide which you can get for free. So we're just following it. Bar le Duc is the capital of the Meuse department in the Grand Est region in the northeastern part of France. Bar le Duc was at one time the seat of the county from 1354, the Duchy of Bar. Though probably of ancient origin, the town was unimportant until the 10th century, when it was fortified by Friedrich I of Upper Lorraine. Bar was independent duchy from 1354 to 1480, when it was acquired by the Duchy of Lorraine. The Ville Ho, which is reached by staircases and steep narrow through fairs is intersected by a long quiet street bordered by houses of the 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries. In this quarter are the remains of the castles of the Dukes of Bar. It was dismantled in 1670. Its church of Saint Etienne, constructed during the 14th and 15th centuries, contains the cadaver tomb of René of Chalon. A skillful carved effigy in white stone of a half-decayed corpse. The lower town contains the official buildings and the churches of Notre Dame, the most ancient in the town, and Saint Anthony with 14th century frescoes. Bar le Duc served as the assembly point for essential supplies going to the besieged city of Verda during the Battle of Verda in 1916. Thousands of trucks carrying men, equipment, and food traveled north, around the clock, on the road linking Barleduc to Verda. The route was given the name Voy Sacri, which translates to Sacred Way. Now let us see some of the historic sites around the upper town. The Saint Etienne Church Built in 1350 to 1630 in a Gothic style and has also some Renaissance feature. Its most important site is the cadaver tomb of René of Chalon a late Gothic period funerary monument. It was completed sometime between 1544 and 1557. And the majority of its construction is attributed to the French sculptor D.G. Richter. In 1782, the other collegiate church in the town, St. Max, became a parish church. In doing so, the chapter of St. Max merges with that of St. Pierre and brings with it its treasure, its relics, as well as the remains of the sovereigns of Baroy, and thus giving birth to St. Etienne Church. During the revolution, the building was mutilated and looted. The statues on the facade, the coat of arms covered the church were removed. Forced with the state of degradation of the building, restoration work was undertaken in the 19th century. To know more about the Church of St. Etienne, check out the description below for the link. The Florinville Hotel It was first written or mentioned in 1628. It was later occupied by the Florinville family, originally from Luxembourg, who held its fiefdom of the Dukes of Par. This building dominates the place Saint Pierre by the richness of its ornamentation. In the 17th century, it was also called Hotel de Meuse because of the Baron de Meuse was its owner. In 1752, 
it became the property of the city of Barleduc. It was the town hall until 1794. It was here therefore that the city councillors received Princess Marie Antoinette of Austria on May 10, 1770, on her way to Compagnie, where she would marry the future King Louis XVI. After housing a military reserve company from 1805 to 1814, the hotel became the seat of the Municipal Museum. But since 1949, it has housed a tribunal de grand instance, then the Assize Court. The coat of arms of the Florinville family, which adorned the facade, have been replaced by those of the Kingdom of France and those of the Duchy of Bar, surmounted by the Latin motto, High Deeds Resound. St. Peter's Square it takes its name from the former name of the Church of St. Etienne, formerly the Collegiate Church of St. Pierre. Both vast and open, it is the heart of the city. Its elongated shape allows many events such as tournaments to take place. Rejoicings are also organized on the occasion of family ceremonies or visits of the greatest personalities. As in 1559, during the visit of the King of France, Francis II, his wife Marie Stuart, and the Queen Mother Catherine de' Medici. These celebrations which bring together the entire population take place over several days. The square is bordered on one side by the Hotel de Florenville and by the Island Market Hall. On the other side, the former convent of the Carmelites and residences of Renaissance style complete the ensemble. These houses, erected essentially in the 16th and 17th centuries to replace medieval construction, saw their openings modified in the 18th century for the sake of greater comfort. French, French pastry. The streets of the Grand Jets. This street follows the eastern layout of the old enclosure. The name goes back to that of the locality Le Grand Jet. Mentioned in the 15th century, this street was lined with small barns which serve as outbuildings for the mansions of St. Peter's Square. In 1765, a spinning and weaving workshop was set up here under the direction of the Sisters of the Christian Charity in order to give work and education to young girls of the city. Although there are no traces left behind, it was the first textile factory in the city. This area is now lined up with houses from the beginning of the 16th century, whose facades are typically of the Lorraine style. In the past, this street served as the entrance to the Hall Black. The Street of the Dukes of Bar The main road of the upper town from the Rue de France, coming from Paris. The street of the Dukes of Bar is an aristocratic street, reflecting the wealth and grandeur of Barroi. Members of the elite had their homes built around the area during the 16th century. It was renamed 
the Strait of the Dukes of Bar in 1857 in honor of the sovereigns who contributed to its establishment. Built in fine-grained limestone, the residents of the streets present a grandeur of its inhabitants. This unity of style is accentuated by the regularity of the alignments of the facades and the openings. The private mansions are organized on three levels, the last of which the smallest forms an attic lit by a small window that are often paired. In detail, these residences are all unique with their more or less rich, abundant, or original decorations. The Whole Island A place of trade, storage, and production benefiting from numerous privileges, the hall was built during the reign of Count Theobald II to channel the city's commercial flows. In the 16th century, the Duke regulated the construction in order to harmonize the building. Stone limestone surround the hall made up of arcaded galleries opening in a central courtyard. The outline has hardly changed since the beginning of the 19th century. The economic and commercial function quickly doubled as a judicial function. Its role becomes so important that it ends up giving its name to the entire upper town. A beautiful Baroque-style residence, probably the house of the gatekeeper, bears witness to the importance of this place. The area consisted of the former butcher's hall, shops and dwellings, and also an auditorium or courthouse, a gallows for the execution of capital punishment. The stone gradually replaced wood from 1542 when the Duke Antone authorized traders to build around the hall. The hall monopolized the town until the development of the lower town began. In 1821, it definitely lost its commercial vocation and then experienced several assignments before being sold to several dwellings at the beginning of the 20th century. The Upper City It offers one of the most beautiful Renaissance ensembles in France. Very early on, the Princess of Bar granted important privileges to this district in order to attract and maintain an aristocratic population near the castle. These notables participate in the management of the affairs of the Baroy. The upper town, also called the Howl, thus became a political, economic, and judicial center of the city. To protect this district and with a view to its development, Count Henry II decided to fortify the mountain of Par. He transferred the commercial activities of the city there. It was from the 15th century that the upper town underwent its greatest transformation. Even if the sovereign no longer resided there regularly, they visit surrounded by a brilliant court, deprived of the presence of the dukes who preferred to reside in Nancy, the district gradually declined in favor of the lower town, where commerce and the bourgeois developed from the 18th century. With the revolution, all administrative and economic activities migrated to the valley. Fortunately, this decline eventually led the architectural heritage almost completely intact. The Place of the Fountain The fountain held an important place in the daily life of the ancient regime. It has been supplying drinking water to the inhabitants of the upper town and to the castle since 1465. The Baroque-style monument visible today dates from 1757. It has always been difficult for the inhabitants of the district to obtain drinking water. Before, they used cisterns collecting rainwater and wells are very rare. While the district was booming, Rene I wanted to equip it with a fountain. The pipes were made of wood. 
until 1828 when it was replaced by cast iron. The marble plaque retains the memory of its creation by Rene I. In the past, the city had six fountains, five of which were in the lower town. These were destroyed by the municipality in 1781. The Duke of Bar Castle Anxious to protect his lands, Friedrich the Duke of Haute Lorraine decided towards the end of the 10th century to build a fortified castle on a rocky outcrop overlooking the Ornane Valley. Many times remodeled and large and reinforced, the extremity of the spur is then surrounded by a double enclosure. In order to protect the residents, outbuildings, the St. Max Collegiate Church, and the religious buildings. A real small town within, the stronghold must be able to stand on its own in an event of a siege. Its biggest transformation occurred during the 15th century, when Rene II contributed a lot to its enlargement and richly furnished and decorated. From the 17th century, the Dukes of Bar and Lorraine abandoned bar le -Duc. In addition, in 1649, a fire destroyed it after several French occupation and to punish the anti-French policy of Duke Charles IV, Louis XIV ordered the dismantling of the castle in 1670. To know more about it, check out the description below for the link. The Clock Tower Vestige of the old fortification, it was installed in 1381 by Duke Robert for the people of the castle. It played an important role in the city, alerting the Varisians of an enemy attack or a fire, ringing the curfew, opening up the market, or accompanying the ceremonies. The tower is visible from all parts of the city. Three dials are successively installed on each side. The first in 1381, the second in 1608, intended for the inhabitants of the lower town, and last in 1752, for those of the upper town. The tower escaped the dismantling of the castle in 1670 because of its usefulness, but it was badly mutilated on its side during the destruction of the walls. Only its foundation date back to the 12th or early 13th century. The building had already undergone modification in its upper part after the fires of 1500 and 1639. The roof was restored after a disaster that occurred in 1940. Sam Hotel It stands out from the other residences in the district by its classical architecture. Its height balustrade amplifies the character of this aristocratic residence. It was built in 1716 on the remains of an old residence built by the Salm family whose name it has kept. This first building was destroyed at the beginning of the 18th century occupied by the Lamour family from 1740. It can be assumed that this family was responsible for the construction of the building that has been preserved today. However, it is distinguished by its wide facade opening into the street. The horizontal effect is reinforced by two projecting strips and a balustrade installed at the edge of the roof for ornamental purposes. In contrast, the vases of the flowers and the fire pots carved in its balustrade give the elevation of slender character. The Lamour family, several generations of whom held the position of president of the Duchess Chamber of Accounts, choose to leave the country during the revolution. The hotel will have several successive owners in the following centuries including a boarding school for young girls in the 19th century. It was restored at the beginning of the 21st century and separated into several dwellings. The 
the department hotel. A former normal school for teachers, this imposing building was built outside the old town at the end of the 19th century. In 1883, the construction of the Varician architect Mikol of a building to house a normal school for teachers began on this site. Its classically inspired architecture consists of a long building with four pavilions forming an H plan. Transformed into a military hospital during the First World War, the building accommodated from 1940 to 1944 a German prison where the resistant prisoners of the department were locked up. After the construction of a mixed normal school in 1983, it served as an annex school until its closure in 1988. In the political context of decentralization of the missions of the state, the premises evolved to the General Council as the prefecture became cramped. The old school was adapted to a functional and modern place. A wide forecourt opens into the public space and the ground floor is transparent in order to lighten the heavy 19th century facade. Since 1991, it has been classified hotel of the department. The Fortifications On the borders of the Kingdom of France and of the Empire, the province remained independent for a long time. The ducal city of Barleduc was protected by several enclosures in the valley and the stronghold. No less than four levels of protection to keep the inhabitants safe from danger. On the side of the upper town, in order to protect the easiest access to the fortress, the rocky outcrop is barred by four round towers, of which that the clock is one of the last witnesses today. That's the lower town of Barleduc. The enclosure of the upper town is distinct from those of the castle. The link between the two is through a fortified gate equipped with a drawbridge over a dry ditch. From this urban wall, some remains are still visible. Since the Treaty of Bruges in 1301, the Count of Bar has been a vassal of the King of France. However, from 1624, Duke Charles IV led a resolutely anti-French policy of independence, forcing the king to intervene militarily. On several occasions, the city was occupied, and in 1670, Louis XIV ordered the dismantling of the city's fortifications, thus ruling out any new threat. So guys, I hope you enjoy our tour of Bar Le Duc and uh, if you guys want to know more about it, please uh, type it in the comments below and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye. So guys, if you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and feel free to comment. Hit the bell, hit the bell, hit the bell, hit the bell, come on guys, hit the bell! For notifications! And don't forget to share! And like!